Hi, in this video we're going to do a couple of examples. Uh, one's going to be a law of total probability example, another's going to be a Bayes theorem example, but uh, as we've seen before, they're very closely related. Okay, so let's just jump right in. Uh, both examples use the same sort of uh, format here where we have two urns. Urn 1 contains 15 red balls and 10 green balls, and urn 2 contains uh, 4 red balls and, and 15 green balls. A ball is going to be selected, uh, randomly selected from urn 1 and transferred to urn 2, and then a ball is going to be selected from urn 2. After, after a ball has been transferred, we're going to select a ball from urn 2, and we want to know what the probability is that the ball selected from urn 2 is red. Okay, so before we get into kind of, uh, you know, the mathematics and the, and the notation and all behind this, uh, let's just kind of logically think through it and, and hopefully develop some intuition or maybe you already have the intuition. So we're going to transfer a ball from, uh, from urn 1 to urn 2, and of course that ball could be red or, or green. Uh, the ball would be red with probability since, since there are 15 red balls out of 25 uh, total balls in, in urn 1, uh, the probability that the ball's transferred from urn 1 to urn 2 is red is 15 out of 25 or 0.6. And likewise, the probability that the ball was green would be 10 out of 25 or 0.4. And so just logically with probability 0.6 then, urn 2 is going to have 5 red balls and 15 green balls because with that probability 0.6, a, ball, a red ball was added to urn 2. And so with that probability of 0.6, the probability then of selecting a red ball from urn 2 would be 5 out of 20. There are 5 red balls out of the 20 total, and that, prob that, that fraction is, is uh, 1 fourth or 0 0.25. In a similar way, with probability 0.4, uh, the urn 2 then would, look, would have 4 red balls and 16 green balls. We've transferred a green ball over. And so with probability 0.4, then the probability of, uh, of, of selecting a, a red ball from urn 2 would be 4 out of 20. There would be 4 red balls now out of 20, or 0 0.2. And so then it's just, uh, you know, uh, a weighted average then. I take a weighted average of the 0.25 and the, point, and the, and the 0.2, of course, which is what a, a, uh, a law of total probability is. So the probability that a red ball is selected from urn 2 after I transferred a ball from urn 1 would be the 0.25 times 0.6 and then plus 0.2 times 0.4. So we weight that we weight the values 0.25 and 0.2 with the weights of 0.6 and 0.4 and we get a 0.23. Okay, so now let's add a little uh, mathematic, uh, mathematical notation to this. So let's start by defining the event cap T to be the event that the color of the, uh, or, or, I'm sorry, define cap T to be the color of the, uh, of the transferred ball. And so we have the probability that cap T is red is 0.6 and the probability that cap T is green is 0.4. Okay, so now let's add another letter here to uh, a, a cap C to represent the uh, the color of the ball uh, of the ball selected from urn two. And so what we have then is mathematically how we would write this in is that uh, we would have see these conditional probabilities. The probability that the color of the ball from urn two is red, given that the transferred ball was red, is five out of twenty, and the probability that uh, the color of the ball selected from urn 2 is red, given that the transfer ball was green, was 4 out of 20. This is all what we did before. We're just kind of putting some, some mathematical symbols to it. And, of course, the 5 out of 20 and the 4 out of 20 are these decimal values. And then, as I said before, this is nothing more than a law of total probability problem. Uh, I, would I would calculate the probability that the ball selected uh, from urn 2 is red by taking 0.25 times that 0.6 plus the 0.2 times the uh, times the 0.4. Okay, so that's a law of total probability problem. I need to, uh, in order to get to the next problem, I need to uh, uh, develop this notation, and, and this is the notation that we have. Okay, so now let's look at uh, the next problem. Uh, the first two lines in example 2 are exactly the same as the first two lines in example 1. We have the exact same setup. But now look at the third line. This time we're going to say the ball selected from urn 2 is red. We're going to be given that the ball selected from urn 2 is red, and we want to calculate now the probability that the transferred ball was green. This is a little bit harder problem. Um, so let me go back to example 1. So I'll, uh, I'm going to show you example 1, and all, I'm doing, uh, all I want to point out is this last line in the, in the wording of the problem. This was example 1. We were asked to calculate the probability uh, that the selected 
the ball selected from urn two was red after we made this transfer. And now I'm saying, let's suppose that we know that the ball selected was red. What was the probability now that the transferred ball was green? Okay, so now let's go back to the same notation and, 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 and information that I had before uh, from, from the first problem, from the law of total probability problem. This is what I had, uh, uh, this is the information that I had before. But now, again, I'm going to uh, assume that the ball selected from R2 is red. Uh, so I'm given that, and, the, and I'm asked to calculate this probability. So they're not telling you it's a conditional probability, but it's actually, a, it is a conditional probability. I've listed, I've, I've written it down there in the bottom left. I'm asked to calculate here the probability that the transfer ball is green, given that the ball, given that the ball selected uh, from urn two was red. And uh, again, that, that's, that's obviously a, a uh, conditional probability. I want to highlight something to you here. If I turn, if I turn those, uh, so I highlighted in red the, 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 the two probabilities that I want to focus on. If you look at the bottom left probability and compare that to the probability on the bottom right there, uh, I just interchange the two events. And that's, 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 that's a Bayes' theorem problem. So we're talking about a Bayes' theorem problem. If you would interchange the two events, it's an easy question to answer. It's, uh, you know, what's the probability that the, the color of the ball selected from R2 is red, given that the transfer ball is green? That's, a, that's, an easy that's an easy calculation. That's an easy problem to answer. But then in, when you switch the events, and that's what Bayes' theorem does, it switches the events, uh, and, and then it becomes a little bit more difficult question. Okay, so now let's look at the bottom left. I want to I want to calculate this conditional probability. So the first thing I'm going to do is just uh, use the facts with the fact about conditional probability that the probability of a given b is the probability of a and b divided by the probability of b. And I'm going to apply that fact with a being the event that the transferred ball is green and b being the event that the color of the ball chosen from urn two was was red. And so when I when I just apply these. Uh, this, apply this this conditional probability fact. This is the equation that I that I get. And now let's look at the numerator for just a second. Uh, this is a probability of an a intersect b. Uh, a being the transfer ball equals is is green, and b being the color of the selected ball from urn two is is red. And now what I want to do is just interchange the roles of a and b. So I'm just going to swap them around. So again, all I did is, is swap the, uh, the events around. So the probability of A and B is the same as the probability of B and A. So I just switched the events around and now I'm gonna ap apply the, the, the fact that the probability of A intersect B is generally this conditional probability of A given B and then times the probability of B using A being, with A being the event that the, that the um, uh, boss uh, selected from urn two is red and B being the event that the uh, transfer ball is green. So again, I, I, I switch the events around, and when I do that and I apply, uh, apply this probability fact of A intersect B, then this is the equation that I would get. All right, and so look again, I just kind of want to point out the fact. I've, I've, I've started with a probability uh, that's a conditional probability on the left, bottom left. It's kind of difficult to do. And now what have I done? I've rewritten it such that now I'm, I'm using the conditional probability with the events reversed, which was the easier calculation to do. And that's, base, that's a base theorem. That's, what, that's how you're going to do a base theorem problem every time. In order to get some more room, I'm going to, uh, in that last line there, I'm going to delete the middle, uh, the middle expression in just to get some more room here. And now I want to, uh, uh, now let's, let's, let's look at, at each of these, um, uh, well actually let's just look at the denominator. The denominator is what we did before. This, I mentioned before that Bayes' theorem and the law of total probability are very related, and this is where. Uh, in the denominator, when you, when you write Bayes' theorem out, in the denominator, you're going to get a probability that you're going to need to calculate using the law of total probability. And we just did that in the last uh, example. And so in the last example, we saw that that denominator was the 0.25 times 0.6 plus 0.2 times, times 0.4. Now, in the denominator, when you use that law of total probability, again, this is how Bayes' theorem is going to work every time. In that denominator, you're going to have a, a, a sum of a couple of, a sum of terms. In this case, I have two terms. I'm going to highlight the first term in red and the second term in, in green. So in the denominator, when you, when you rewrite, uh, the, when you get the expression for Bayes' 
uh, for this probability. And, and, and uh, in the denominator, where you're going to use the law of total probability, you're going to get an expression that has several terms. And my point here is that the numerator will be one of those two terms. So now you just have to figure out, well, which one of those two terms is the numerator going to be? Uh, and of course, the numerator corresponds to the uh, transfer ball being green, so I'm, I'm, I, I, would, I would replace the numerator with its values, which is the, the, the green values in the denominator. Okay, so that's going to be, uh, that's how you're going to do Bayes' theorems. That's, they're all done the same way. Uh, if we went through, let's go through the rest of the calculation. In the numerator, we're going to get 0 0.08. The denominator, we're going to get 0 0.23, which you can multiply numerator and den denominator by 100 and, and just write that as an 8 over 23. Okay, so uh, again, that's, that's a typical Bayes' theorem problem. Uh, it's going to use the law of total probability. You're going to have to use the law of total probability in the denominator, and then the denominator becomes a certain uh, a sum of a, a number of terms. In this case, there were two terms. There might be three or four terms in the denominator, but then the numerator will be, always be one of those terms in the denominator. Okay, so uh, uh, that's it with this example. I'll see you in the next video.